Good morning on this Wednesday morning, and I trust you're all keeping safe. Our worship this morning is taken from the Church of England prayers for use during the coronavirus outbreak. And I'm going to look for inspiration again from Psalm 98, the psalm appointed in the lecture for today. So let us begin our worship. The Lord is good, a strong refuge when trouble comes. God is close to those who trust in him. O Lord, open our lips, and our mouths shall proclaim your praise. The night has passed and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and for ever. Amen. Psalm 98 Praise the Judge of the World O oh, sing to the Lord a new song, for he has done marvellous things. His right hand and his holy arm have gotten him victory. The Lord has made known his victory. He has revealed his vindication in the sight of the nations. He has remembered his steadfast love and faithfulness to the house of Israel. All the ends of the earth have seen the victory of our God. Make a joyful noise to the Lord, all the earth. Break forth into joyous song and sing praises. Sing praises to the Lord with the lyre, with the lyre and the sound of melody, with trumpets and the sound of the horn. Make a joyful noise before the King, the Lord. Let the sea roar and all that fills it, the world and those who live, love live in it. Let the floods clap their hands, let the hills sing together for joy at the presence of the Lord, for he is coming to judge the earth. He will judge the world with righteousness and the peoples with equity. Amen. Well, this morning we heard this in the psalm references to a loving and faithful God, about being joyous and about a God who will judge the world with righteousness and the people with equity. And it made me start thinking about last Sunday when the church celebrated Christ the King. On Sunday, I contrasted Jesus' style of leadership with that of many of our leaders in the world today. We see Jesus is caring and being compassionate and loving towards others, putting others first and willing to befriend all, including the marginalised. I then, then start thinking about some of the so-called leaders in the world today and in sharp contrast to see, perceive opposite traits to those of Jesus. I often see them acting for personal gain, bullying, abusive, and often blatantly lying and spreading of misinformation to promote their own aims. What a contrast. My fear is that if this kind of behaviour is blatantly seen with so-called leaders, does this endorse this kind of behaviour as being okay and hence acceptable in society? Sometimes those who behave in this deplorable manner profess to be practising Christians. This is not what I see and I question what Jesus would say if he witnessed this sort of behaviour under the banner of his name. No. I think Jesus makes it truly clear in the Gospels how we should behave, how we should treat others, to care for and to love all, regardless of any differences there may be. Amen. So let us pray. We pray for all those in positions of power, that they may govern with wisdom and integrity, serving the needs of their people. We pray for the church, 
the sign of your reign, that it may extend your welcome to people of every race and background. We pray for Christians of every denomination, that together we may come to understand the royal priesthood you bestowed on us in baptism. We pray for those whose commitment to truth brings them into conflict with earthly powers, that they may have the courage to endure. We pray for this community of faith that, attentive to your word, we may always worship in spirit and in truth. We pray for all those in need at this time. We ask that you relieve their suffering, bring your healing touch, and give them hope for a better future. We ask that you give compassion, strength, perseverance and courage to all who care for and help those in need. Loving Father, we ask for your help during this time of pandemic lockdown to be patient, respectful and considerate towards others so that we comply with those constraints which are necessary to contain the virus. We thank you for inspiring our doctors and research pharmacists to discover ways to treat and beat this virus. And we look forward to returning to normality in the future. Loving Father, we pray for all who have recently died and whose loved ones still at the forefront of our memories. We remember especially at this time Margaret Tuck and Arthur Bergen, loving, faithful witnesses for the Church. We also remember Lord Jonathan Sachs, a brilliant theologian whose wisdom enabled his preaching to be valid by all faiths. We pray that they are in your heavenly embrace. May they rest in peace and rise in glory. Loving Father, we ask that you help those involved in the Brexit talks to find agreement to maintain harmony with our neighbours. We pray for integrity, honesty in all that our leaders do. Loving Father, we pray for peace in your world, that harmony may be found through compromise, wisdom and unselfish negotiations rather than through conflict and suffering and war. Loving God, you have taught us that the power of the heart is greater than the power of wealth and might. Hear us as we pray for the fulfilment of your reign. We ask this through Jesus Christ our King. To him be glory and power for ever. Amen. Now we pray together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless us and preserve us from all evil and keep us in eternal life. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Keep safe and God bless.